Hi, everyone. Thanks for sticking around for the very last uh, presentation of the forum here. My name is Charlene Sylvester. I am with the Corps of Engineers uh, Mobile District. Um, I actually support the Joint Airborne LiDAR Bathymetry Technical Center of Expertise. That center is actually located on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, um, actually adjacent to the Stennis Space Center. And today I'm going to be talking about a recent effort that we undertook to integrate Jabaltec's elevation data products with existing, often other source, elevation data products to support a Corps of Engineer-led uh, large-scale coastal uh, modeling effort. Yeah. Correct direction. So I'll start with a quick overview. The Joint Airborne LiDAR Bathymetry Technical Center of Expertise is actually a partnership amongst the federal government, industry, and academia, and our goal is to perform operations and research in airborne LiDAR bathymetry and complementary technologies. The Corps of Engineers, <coughs> Jabaltec, excuse me, Jabaltec is the Corps of Engineers expert in coastal mapping, and the Jabaltec owns a suite of sensors, including LiDARs with um, air, with topographic and bathymetric capability, as well as three and four band digital cameras and hyperspectral imagers. Um, we have deployed these sensors operationally for both the Corps of Engineers and the Naval Oceanographic Office um, to meet the nautical uh, charting requirements and coastal mapping needs of these two organizations. Um, and both organizations actually address data requirements um, on a reimbursable basis as needed, and both organizations have also um, performed operations in response um, to different um, emergencies as, as tasked um, by, by FEMA or other um, entities. Um, the collaborative has over 18 years of experience in 20 different countries of operating these sensors, and, and with that we have always collaborated to share uh, contracts for data acquisition, we share sensor hardware, we share software, but most importantly we share technical expertise amongst everybody involved to develop um, these data into actionable data products that have a use across a host of applications. And all of our partners are listed here on the slide. So the current capability that we are utilizing to perform operations with is uh, the Coastal Zone Mapping and Imaging LiDAR, or SEASMIL. SEASMIL is actually the third generation airborne bathymetric LiDAR that the Jabaltec Collaborative um, has fielded. Um, SEASMIL integrates a 532 nanometer, or green wavelength, um, laser with, both, with simultaneous topographic and bathymetric capabilities with a four-band 150 megapixel digital camera. And we also have a hyperspectral imager on the same um, aircraft platform. I'm comparing SeasMill to earlier generation, <coughs> earlier generations of this technology, SeasMill is providing data at a higher uh, resolution, and it is also um, providing better data or imp improved data in the very near shore, shallow, turbid waters that have traditionally been a challenge for earlier generations um, of this technology. Um, and at the same time, we are maintaining our existing depth capability that we've had with the earlier generations of the sensors. The operational scenario is depicted here on the slide. Um, we do fly low and slow, so we're only about 400 meters above ground level. And at this altitude, we produce a swath of data that's approximately 300 meters across. The Corps of Engineer operations are conducted under a national coastal mapping program. This program was initiated in 2004 with funding from Corps of, Corps of Engineer headquarters. <coughs> The footprint of the program is depicted here on the slide, but essentially it covers that active portion of the beach profile. And that's specifically designed um, for this data to be incorporated in, region, in the development of regional sediment budgets, as well as help our engineers and scientists better understand and monitor the co changing coasts and environmental resources amongst which we operate, um, construct, build, and maintain our navigation, our flood damage risk reduction, and our ecosystem restoration projects. The colors on this slide represent the number of times that a given area of coast has been surveyed under the National Coastal Mapping, or has been surveyed by Javel Tech since the National Coastal Mapping Program began in 2004. Um, we're officially in our third cycle of this program. However, you'll notice that there are several areas that have repetitive data coverage. And these areas have been flown um, either due to the reimbursable requirements that I had mentioned previously or due to the emergency response activities. We're showing um, the dates associated with those three cycles 
of collection on the slide here. Um, we spent our summer primarily um, in the Great Lakes um, performing national coastal mapping program operations up there. And next year, we are scheduled to start back in on the West Coast. Um, we're also sharing um, what I'm calling out year tentative dates for the start of our fourth cycle of this program, and that is tentatively scheduled to begin in 2022 right in our backyard along the Mississippi Gulf Coast. The basic data products that are produced um, from this program include uh, LiDAR point clouds. Um, we have a few different examples uh, shown here, where on the top right we're colored by height, and the bottom right we are colored by point density, and then the top left um, just by RGB uh, value. The point clouds are classified, so all, every point is either a ground or a non-ground um, point. So um, that facilitates some additional uh, uses sort of down the processing stream. Um, but we also do uh, deliver the imagery that's collected concurrent, um, both in time and space, with the LiDAR data products. And that imagery is produced at a five centimeter pixel. Um, like I had mentioned, with the point clouds being classified, we also do deliver both uh, digital surface models and digital elevation models, along with the shoreline contour that we've defined as the NAVD88 zero meter shoreline. All of the data products are produced with industry standard workflows that are repeatable. This promotes the, the easy ease of use and reuse of these data products across the gamut of, of applications. Um, all of the products are referenced horizontally um, to NAD83, the 2011 adjustment, they are in geographic coordinates, and vertically the data is referenced to NAVD88. This is just a summary of uh, recent data products that have been um, delivered. Um, you don't pay too much attention to the numbers, but maybe on the bottom row, you get a quick um, feeling that this is, a this is a lot of data that is being collected, acquired, processed, and delivered. Um, the data is widely distributed, um, so we do deliver, of course, the data to the Corps of Engineer District in which the data was collected, and then we also deliver it to the Corps of Engineers Geospatial Repository and Data Management System, and that facilitates uh, data access uh, DOD-wide, or for folks in the DOD. Um, on, on the public side, we do distribute the data to NOAA Office of Coastal Management, and there the team integrates the data into Digital Coast, which makes it available for public consumption there. Um, along with um, the folks at NOAA Office of Coastal Management, we also do send a copy of the data to the NOAA Centers for Environmental Information. They actually serve as our long-term archive for these data sets. Um, and then finally, we send copies of the data to our collaborators in USGS at their Coastal and Marine Geology program located in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, and we send another copy to the um, EUROS data center um, as well. So that data is available. Um, so given our, our recent deliveries of, of data, we were approached by um, the Corps of Engineers, Engineer Research and Development Center's Coastal and Hydraulics Laboratory, and you thought you had a mouthful. But um, they had recently approached us to integrate these newly delivered data sets um, into, existing, uh, into existing data sets to generate a seamless DEM at three meter resolution to support a large scale regional modeling effort known as the South Atlantic uh, comprehensive study. Um, we were, had some pretty um, severe time constraints with the development um, of these DEMs, and it was such that we were not going to be able to do much in the way of data processing or reprocessing or data manipulation. So really the preference here and the goal here was to utilize existing available DEMs. Um, the job of the deliveries um, they were, we were tasked with providing included the three uh, meter resolution uh, tile DEMs. We were also um, needing to provide elevation uh, contours at both the uh, negative 75 meter depth contour and the 25 meter contour on land, um, as well as uh, some ancillary data products um, that would let the modeling team know where there were, might be voids in the DEMs um, and sort of uh, provide additional information getting back, linking the final delivered DEMs back to the source data. And I should have mentioned on the other slide, the, the regional, the, the scope of this project included that area from the North Carolina, uh, Virginia border all the way around to the Mississippi, Alabama border and also included 
from that area between those two depth contours, so the 25 meter elevation contour and um, the 75 meter depth contour, and Puerto Rico was also included. Um, so the first step in kicking off this effort was to develop a data inventory. And again, our goal here was to leverage available existing analysis-ready DEM data products that could be readily integrated with the existing um, data products that are produced from Javel, Texas National Coastal Mapping Program. So I should note here that both the USGS and NOAA and CEI support the development of um, high-resolution um, integrated topo bathymetric um, digital elevation models. However, the models that existed in the areas that we were tasked with working um, had not been updated in a number of years. And of course, the goal too was to integrate these newly data sets that we just delivered um, into these models. <coughs> so this is an example of what the inventory looks like for the Gulf of Mexico area. Um, there's a lot to see here on the table that you probably can't read, but the gist is that it was we were dealing with sort of multi-source, multi-resolution, um, multi-temporal uh, data sets. And for the Gulf of Mexico specifically, this entailed 22 data sets that spanned over 130 years at four different resolutions. Um, all of this data was downloaded locally um, for, for work um, at, at our office. Meanwhile, we were also getting ready to kick off our 2019 survey season uh, with projects um, slated for uh, the North Carolina area, which are the boxes you see there in the magenta in the graphic um, at right. So we wanted to ensure that the path that we decided to go down would actually accommodate and facilitate the ingestion of any new data that became available in a more readily rapid fashion. So we looked directly at Esri's mosaic data set architecture to facilitate um, this work. And the, the, this brief overview behind all that is basically we developed um, uh, source mosaic data sets from each of the data sources that was downloaded. Those source mosaic data sets were then uh, ranked or given a priority, if you will. And that ranking was such that we wanted the uh, highest resolution, newest data to appear at the top of our mosaic and imagine a layer cake of data sets, if you will. And then at the bottom, we had our lowest resolution, oldest um, data sets. So once the ranking was done, we then merged um, those uh, source mosaic data sets into regional derived mosaic data sets, um, where we decided to utilize the uh, uh, default, uh, the mosaic method set to by attribute, and we used the attribute that we used to rank the data sets. And so in effect, um, the newest data would appear at the top. Um, here I'm just zooming into an area between uh, East Pass or Destin and, and Port St. Joe, um, really just to show that we are getting and seeing the highest resolution um, data there at the top. This is East Pass uh, Inlet, where with the bathymetric LiDAR, we've got some pretty awesome um, sandbars. And you do see that we, um, even despite putting 22 data sets together, there are still voids um, in, in the data. So some of the challenges with an approach like this is that um, because of the mosaic method that we chose, um, and um, be, whether it be due to coverage extent or actual temporal change uh, between data sets, you can see artifacts in your final mosaics. Um, the step that is shown here, we brought this up to the attention of the modeling team. And at the end of the day, we were going to a three meter grid and then um, Further, once they receive the data, they're going to be going to a 10-meter grid. So the feeling was that these steps would really be a non-issue. Non what was perhaps more vexing was, um, again, we were leveraging existing available data analysis-ready DEMs for this work. And um, a lot of those DEMs, particularly those coming from the USGS's 3 dep program, have some extent of hydro-flattening. So these are inland body areas um, inland water bodies that have been set to a constant elevation value and or, you know, perhaps, um, you know, in case of our own data, um, interpolated over. And, and what that does is if in your sort of layer cake example, if you have valid, if you have a data void in your, let's say, highest priority, you know, data set and it's, it's hydro flattened, it's going to sort of cover up any valid bathymetry that you might have in sort of a data set just, just below it. 
Um, and if that's confusing, I'm happy to talk after <laughs> to anybody. But getting at the deliverables, because I know I'm running short on time, um, we did uh, deliver the three-meter tiled dams. Um, an example is shown here from the Puerto Rico um, area. Um, we did uh, use ArcGIS Pro's split raster geoprocessing uh, tool to split our final mosaic into these tiles. The modeling team wanted files that were about 500 megabytes in size, um, just for ease of use purposes. And then the contours, again, that were delivered are depicted here on the screen. And that was just done with the contour tool in the spatial analyst toolbox. Um, the metadata masks uh, were built um, and provided as a means for the modeling team to be able to understand um, you know, when they're looking at a delivered tile um, a dim and a pixel value, they wanted a way to trace that pixel ba value back to the source um, from which it, it, source data set from which it was derived. Um, so that's what we're seeing here again, zoomed into that East Pass area um, near Destin, um, where we can see that this coverage was largely provided from our 2018, 2016, and 2015 data. Jabletex has a lot of content out on the web that's available for your perusal. Um, there we have um, some image services where we are sharing um, these DEMs um, that are produced out of the National Coastal Mapping Program. And another important one might be the production status map that will depict all of our flight blocks that we currently have in production at the office. In. Uh, they're, they're symbolized by the status of that data in our production cycle um, back at the office. And again, these are just some URLs that we're sharing um, related to that content that's out there. Thank you. Thank you.